because they had to, and they weren't getting anything out of out of loop. Uh, they they were didn't get any loop. double pay or anything like you that. Know, um, and they were just uh, one of the things they were really consistent in saying is, "Hey, where's the transparency?" I mean, they they were right there at the beginning with the doctors and and the senators calling for transparency from the administration, and even still, and talking with uh, you know Mayor Stavaris, for example. It uh, still seems like there are some uh, communication barriers mm-hmm. or breakdowns. So we're going to play this uh, song. It's uh, Dedito Mayor uh, Melissa Savarez, and this is from the Mayor's Council of Guam meeting yesterday where they were discussing. How did it get into this? Uh, I'm not even sure. Adriana said that she got there, and then all of a sudden, you know, it started, it, and then uh, Mayor all Savarez. All of a sudden. Yeah, so she stood up, and she, she started uh, recording. Right. Karen Byron. Here you go. It's your Mayor of Dedito, Melissa Savarez. Let it out, girl. Let it yeah. out. Man, how come she... And she just called the show yesterday, and she was like, yeah, we're going to have a nice meeting, and um, Agate's going to be serving, and it's going to be really cool, and we just really miss each other, and we did our social distancing in Atlanta. Well, we've got I get the meet. tables, and right. we're going to have everybody seated six feet apart. Like, where did that come from? <laughs> I like it, though. Yeah. Feisty, Mayor. Feisty. Man, feisty how, Mayor. You know, good on her, though. I mean, they've been busting their ass, and yeah, so yep. good for them. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, we haven't seen them complaining about 10, 15, 25% differential, which is exactly what you heard out of these quarantine angels. 
Quarantine shepherds. Quarantine saviors. What are we calling you guys this week? Quarantine messiahs. Quarantine Jesuses. Quarantine Gandhis. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. They were like, yeah, we deserve the pay. Mm-hmm. Which is this. I'm you, waiting for the medal. You the sound stupid. You just sound stupid because you're getting paid 80 grand and you're delivering towels to rooms. And I know there's some risk involved, but it's not the same risk as the National Guard or nurses and doctors. And I know this ship has sailed already, but it mm-hmm. hasn't really because we still have some outstanding FOIAs out there to find out which directors got paid how much mm-hmm. for the COVID differential, right? Because mm-hmm. it's over now, but remember, they were... Um, I think there was something that we had got where it was uh, told to us by Adaloop that they would be in the middle, which is a fifteen percent. Yeah, I don't even remember now. Yeah, Twenty so fifteen ten. Well, you could just replay <laughs> the clip. Mayor Savars knows. Yeah, <laughs> and like she said, she didn't ask. They weren't asking for anything. They were just doing what they do every time there's a disaster. They step up. Right. And this. Uh, crisis they went above and beyond i mean they had so much to do everything always goes to the mayors and they rose to the challenge and um we're going to bring on uh, one of the the mayors uh, now here uh, the vice president of the mayor's council of guam who um was seated right next to the president uh. <laughs> <laughs> thank you yeah i know yeah. what how did that happen what, hey, happened? Ma- what led Rob- up to that mayor robert hoffman uh, everyone um, you know, she's, it's, it's, I guess it's a, a lot of criticisms has been happening lately of a lot of the mayors saying, you know, what are we doing? Just because people don't see what we do, mm-hmm. we're doing a, quite a lot of myriad of things. And, mm-hmm. you know, who's, people, who's criticizing them? I guess people on social media every once in a while. And then, you know, sometimes you get the regular trolls and fake internet stuff that are just putting on their page or sending them messages. So mm-hmm. she just got into a, a passion role of just, you know, she was practically cheering and, you know, She's been out there, you know, a lot, seven days a week, a lot. And she cares for her elderly mom and her dad. And, you know, so she's very concerned about Corona, but she also has, you know, a job to do. And we all do and our staff do. So, you know, it's never once did it cross our minds like, hey, what percentage and what rate are we at? And, you know, who's going to do this for us and who's going to do that for us? So, you know, we always say if it comes, it comes. If it doesn't, hey, you know, we're kind of doing our jobs here. But, you know, to be recognized somewhere in any legislation or law would be nice you know yes they're unclassified but they rise to the challenge typhoon earthquake disaster Mm -hmm. road closure you name it you know all agencies like angel said every agency relies on the mayor and we touch all agencies and they you know they they help us from doe with the grab and go and distribution of the educational materials to dpw with helping roads and i mean we're lending our equipment to the national guard Mm -hmm. the police so yeah, I know. Even the media, you guys are like the first ones we go to. If something's happening somewhere, we call, call the, the mayor. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So, you know, it is it is hard, and uh, it, it it just you know, yesterday's meeting was a long time coming. We we try to figure out how we can best do it moving forward. We like meeting in person. It's always great because we're you know we've grown fond of each other for the past four <laughs> years almost. So, um, but you know, we're, we've also talked about using technology being able to do that just in case things get worse or turn, make a turn for the worst that we're able to do zoom and other things so uh as part of working with otec the office of technology we we're able to kind of get that up into you know up to par with the rest of them so uh, we look forward to maybe having that zoom meeting later on just one as a way to test it out and then we can also have more people be involved and watch and listen to what yeah. we do we had a comment here from uh, cynthia a uh, mayor of ours is telling the truth the mayor's office does deliver commodities and uh, Mayor Hoffman is also a frontliner. Ever so often, the frontliners were out there uh, suffering and sacrificing. And there was Mayor Hoffman dropping off plates of food at my house. So whenever it came to inspections for uh, Gora, uh, they were always willing to, to help out as well. So Thank you, yes. Yeah. And, and, and we, it's, some, it's, the, it's the little things that we don't go there. We don't bring a camera crew and take a picture with us and say, hey, look, I'm getting water. <laughs> you don't do like a nice commercial? Yeah, look at me. Yeah, <laughs> look no. at these thousands of people lining up for federal aid and look at me taking the credit for it. Hey. Yeah, you know, we did our fruit distribution yesterday thanks to Pacific Unlimited, the USDA, and Matson. We did our fruit distribution, and it was without any pomp and circumstance. We did it. Our people came out. And move on to the next thing. You know, that's kind of what mm-hmm. our, mm-hmm. our thing is. We're focused, and we just go on to the next one. We're not there for the photo op, or, mm-hmm. you know, we're not carrying a Bible in front of a burning church. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we're just like, you know what? Do our job and go. By any chance, are you guys getting any CARES Act funding? Any of the mayors? Um, is that was that discussed? Right. Or yeah, or? So there there is a request for that. Uh, you know, as you know, most mayors' offices are very open, very mm-hmm. tight. So it's asking for those desk shields and getting the proper PPEs. You know, that's something we've been getting. We've been getting a few from Homeland and uh, from a lot of donors out there has been doing that as well. But as we move forward and trying to kind of find sense of norm, uh, some sense of normalcy, people are we're getting more requests for verifications and for... What about laptops? Are you guys getting some laptops, some PPEs? Um, we did. Any, I know there was a portion that we did request for some type of uh, materials, but it's hard to be able to work from home. You can't really work from home and be a mayor. Kind of thing. I mean, some mayors can't work from home. No, <laughs> no but in, it, it, at least in your office, because people are going to be, you know, they're going to want to apply for, for PUA or anything like yeah, that, or and, if and, any and other situation I arises know in the future. is working on that on that end. but With the libraries? Know, it, yes, with the libraries. I know they're, uh, they were up in Jordania the other day trying to figure that out as well. I know that the mayor elect uh, Bill Kenya already had the Jordan Library repainted and kind of set up. I mean, ground running Monday morning, he was there making sure everything's kind of getting set. So um, it, 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 it's in that realm. And so it, we don't know which responsibility we fall under. So sometimes the other agencies apply for it and then help give it to us on loan, or sometimes they actually give it to us. So for mayor specifically, a lot of it and a lot of our fuel charges jumped because we were delivering the Manamco meals to their homes. I mean, we have 163 mm-hmm. uh, that we're taking care of. And so, you know, our gas consumption skyrocketed because we're sending every vehicle every which way. So we down all the vehicles at 11, 11 a.m. and they're out delivering until about 12 30, 1 o'clock. So, you know, it's a nonstop. So our employees take later lunches, and but they love doing it because these people are practically our family. These Manamco are, you know, we're. Tell them, you know, you survived the war. We're going to make sure Corona doesn't take you. Right. You know, it's our job now to do this. So mm-hmm. uh, they really appreciate all the little things that we do. Mm-hmm. Do you guys uh, keep receipts for all of that? Is there any way you could turn it, it is, in for any sort of... It is, it is tracked on our... It's, it's from our regular purchase orders, and our, it's, it is tracked. And some of us have done it where we're paying out of our pockets in there. And getting reimbursements from government are pretty hard. But we do it, as one, as a labor of love, and two, because, you know, if we don't do it, nobody will. So we just, you know, our employees have been very understanding and accommodating and compassionate. And I, you know, we're just asking them to just open, the, you know, the doors and to assist people. And they're like, you know, you know, how do we know if they have Corona or not? And we don't have the temperature gauges. We don't have those uh, things like that. I said, well, we'll try our best. Wear the masks, wear the gloves and try our best. So we're, we're all trying to figure it out in the mayor's offices. There's no one way to do it. Uh, we're trying to get our guidance as much as but, uh, you know, that's we, we got another uh, comment here, uh, Mayor, from Chamarita writes, and our Mayor Robert Hoffman has his people in the office doing things, especially when the loss of a loved one is uh, laid to rest. He made sure that his people provided uh, till the end. His workers will find ways to get work done. Kudos, Mayor Robert Hoffman and crew. Uh, our friend Glenn uh, writes, and the mayors and their staff and their families should be commended for all their help to the community. Thank you. I mean, that, that's it. it's we, we do it, and it's nature of the job, and we we, we do it because we want to we want to see this through. We want to survive this, and you know things don't stop. Grass still grows. People will still pass on for whatever reason, and you know these are our known villagers. I mean, we, we didn't even have a state funeral for Justice Seguenza, and he's my resident mm-hmm. here in Sinahania, and mm-hmm. you know there, it, there's a lot of things. It's it's hard for grieving families. You know, we've missed people have postponed their weddings i've had baptism so i was telling the church i said it's gonna be a long set of weekends to not have non-stop memorial services and stuff right. says, yeah that's, yeah that's what we're looking are, at are you hearing anything about that mayor for people who uh, may have passed during the covid and then they had the um very very uh, too small ceremony at the cemetery are you hearing anybody family members who maybe are, are now that we're allowed to gather up to 25 thinking of doing a ceremony uh yes Yes, uh, I'm actually on the church bereavement committee. So uh, yes, there oh. is families that are planning this. Uh, you know, right now the norm is the uh, very few family members go to the uh, uh, funeral homes. They just look at the they pre- look at the body, prepare. Father will go there, say a few prayers, go to the cemetery, then they'll inter the body, and then everything's kind of put on a wait waiting hold and pattern and saying, okay, once this is all done, you can have the memorial mass here. And I think most families want to do that because Guam people want to help 
be, well, they want to be there with you. And they want to give the chinchuli. What kind yeah. of chinchuli can he get with a ten-person funeral? I was teasing my nephew that because I said, you're, I heard you're having a graduation. He goes, yeah, we're only allowed three people. I said, invite the three people that will give you money. Right. <laughs> your invite, your, invite your top three <laughs> Ninos. I said, forget your mom and dad. They're not going to give you anything. I said, call your, call your Ninos. And okay, Nino know, number six, that. we're taking you because I know you got a good job. Nino number three, you never stop working during the COVID. There you're invited. You <laughs> and all you got to do is put, lay, lay on that guilt trip. You know, out of all the three people, I chose you. So I hope you value coming to my graduation. <laughs> So, how was the price of that? You know, what's yeah. the price to get? He was, you know, he was laughing because he has five siblings, and he can only take his mom, his dad, and one sibling. So I said, "How are you going to do this?" He goes, "Oh, the two, you know, sisters agreed to not go." Mm-hmm. So, you know, just as so, there's no family fighting, and who feels better, or not? So I, you know, but that's the situation our kids are put right. into. And yeah. so, you know. has there been a thaw, uh, Mayor, with uh, you guys' uh, relationship, if any, with uh, Adeloupe? Because uh, we know that it's been a little. I don't know how to classify it. I want to say almost non-existent uh, because you guys have been doing your thing. They've been doing their thing. Uh, we, we remember all the calls about the transparency um, that, that, I mean, you made a bunch of those calls. Yeah. So how, how is it now? It's a lot better uh, that there's, they're focused on programs, restarting the government things. So we've had that discussions about the stray dogs. We've had the discussions about the junk removal we've had the discussions about you know uh bpes and what we can do so it's been good in that direction so we're like okay this is kind of a this is the what we want to hear i mean if we're not going to if public health still giving us uh, issues about you know where locations okay so give us some good news that we can help our people with and so those are the things that we discussed yesterday uh at our council meeting and you know that was some of the things and then some of the major things that were brought up were about the FAS population and combat impact and things we can do. And then Mayor McDonald was very uh, adamant about asking the courts to come because of these book and releases and, you know, people who burglarize numerous times and, you know, have set the school on fire or done major crimes that other places would, they would be locked up. But, you know, next day is there. And so some of the, our neighborhood watch, a lot of our neighborhood watches are feeling that, you know, they're in danger and they said, well, but why bother then if this is just going to happen? And it, it apparently it affects the tourist industry too, because some of these people that commit crimes against tourists are right out in the streets. So these tourists really don't get justice because either the courts are backlogged by two right. or three years. But you heard, Mayor, one of the the positives out of the COVID is uh, crimes against uh, tourists have decreased. <laughs> yes, <laughs> dramatically. Yes. <laughs> so um, that's they the should Adelup should put that on a commercial <laughs> under our administration. Crimes against tourists decreased during the COVID. <laughs> So uh, people are, uh, but you know, we've seen a rise in littering in the beaches, and I don't know if you saw the picture from Pago oh, Bay last oh, night. Oh God, uh, unbelievable! Where and, is that? You know, Th- did you see that, Ria? No, but I, I know. I mean, Dr. Over, Dr. Mayor. Dr. Akimoto has been talking you. about. Oh, uh, not Gus, Gus Guam, yeah. Yeah, so we're we're actually looking at that. There's something been in the planning. Governor Terrace has mobilized quite a few people and agencies to work together. I think we're targeting June 28th. I'll let them roll that out but uh we're going to try to reopen the island as it reopens and refocuses on some of the tours those tourism bubbles and those safe areas it's um it's really just sprucing up cleaning up so there's going to be a major push and focus from both the private sector the civic groups the government agencies uh it's kind of like an operation reopen guam kind of thing and what better way to do that than just working together so and you know it's interesting to have you know governor Gutierrez and jerry Perez at the helm and a whole bunch of other people Yesterday when I attended the meeting, it felt like a cabinet meeting. I'm like, wow, these are people that I would normally not see at the table, but <laughs> you know who brought them together. Yeah. Right. So, is, it, you know, is this a meeting of uh, GVB? In GVB, yes. Mm-hmm. And so uh, it's nice to see everybody willing, you know, and uh, the, the, I think the, thing, the takeaway from that was nobody in that room said, it's not my job. Right. We all agreed that we're going to do this together. We're going to find a way. Cutting the roadways, you know, the road, the grass cutting and the road race for the a lot have, have stopped because of covid right uh, either the contractors i mean the contract had to be reduced because there's no money to fund that anymore so it's everybody else stepping up so it's how do we mobilize this massive amount of labor and logistics and supply and so you know it, it's it's in the works in the next three weeks that's going to happen and uh we're going to just start seeing some things and we told them those are the things that will bring back that sense of pride and you know one of the things that parks and Rec's director yesterday was talking about was enforcement and 
you know, I shot right back with everybody. I said, someone needs to tell me when was somebody successfully prosecuted for littering or junk piling, and never. And I said, this is, there's, there, there's your problem. They're going to continue to do it because they know no one's ever been successfully prosecuted for it. Mm-hmm. There's no major penalty. You can make the penalty a million dollars. They're going to be like, here you go. I have 90 days to correct it and 60 days to do this correction act in action and this and that. So, you know, whether it be uh, something that needs to be changed in the law or the attorney general. So, mm-hmm. you know, I said on the side, I said, you know how you make people not litter? Withhold their tax refund. There you go. Said, you, 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 t- you tie the fine in that it can be withheld. Mm-hmm. If they're found then that's, they'll, they'll withheld it there. I mean, because mm-hmm. the end of the day is that people end up having to pay to get this removed, either be a private contractor or the government pays to the tipping fees or whatever else like that, because there, there has to be some solution in this. I understand people for, tra- you know, trash services, it is hard, it is, it is hurting, it's not considered a priority. So find a way to do it where all the island now has to shift this out. You know, my, my solution at the time was attach it to the water bill, just charge everybody $5 extra, then give everybody free trash service, the whole island. Mm-hmm. You know, could that cover it? Mm-hmm. Because while they're saying, yeah, there's only 17,000 customers or 20,000 customers, there's 170,000 people on this island. Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Where, where's their trash going? Mm-hmm. So is that what we're looking at on the on that the 28th, is to have this one day to let's all, everybody entirely get together and clean up Guam? Yep. Wow. Yes, uh, and uh, that's the date they're shooting for, and then I think it'll just be within days after that. So, uh, you know, everyone has their marching orders, all these other different agencies and groups and nonprofits. The chamber was there, GHR was there, the Guam Women's Chamber was there. Uh, yeah, it was the private sector. They're going to reach out to everybody to, mm-hmm. you know, hotels that have meetings in front of them, adopt them, get them clean, painted. You know, we're gonna, it's the standardized paint. It's procuring the correct colors for all the pavilions. I think it's like a terracotta color and a beige, and then it's, you know, specific areas. All those that have adopted highways, get out there. You know, all those companies that have adopted parks, get out there. Wait, who was this? Was this a GVB meeting, or it was just a meeting that uh, Governor Gutierrez uh, called Uh, with different stakeholders? Destination Management uh, Committee of GVB. We're we're getting Jerry Perez on at uh, Mm -hmm. 8.15, so we could also ask uh, him about it, too. Yeah, so it's Destination Management, and it's just getting everybody, but this this was in line of the vision of, you know, let's, if we're going to restart the economy and jumpstart it, what better way than showing really, putting our best foot forward, you know, in the past three, four months. Water, you know, things have gotten moldy, and maintenance has fallen by the wayside for whatever reason. And now it's just saying, you know, let's just go out there and clean. And a lot of people have been doing it at their own homes. Now it's time to do it for the rest of us. You know, take island pride. And our thing was, you know, there was no tourists. So that's not tourist trash. Mm-hmm. That's not a... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. our own. And so, you know, the, those, that's just things we're going to clean up from our own people. Right. And we just might find, find a way to kind of do this. And so, yeah. and I don't, know if you've, I don't know if you've seen Paseo, but we've, we saw pictures yesterday. And pretty much many of the pavilions have been become homes for the homeless and they've right. tarps around it and cornered it off and made it, they're, they're squatters there. And, uh, we just got to find a way to address that too. Uh, there was a comment we had here from a, uh, they said they're a homeless person and uh, you're right, they'd all been in that Paseo area and they were told to leave yesterday so we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, send, hey, send us those pictures speaking there. Speaking of homeless, was, is, was there any talk uh, about the homeless uh, shelter? The homeless shelter in which the mayor's council or the GVB one? Either one. I mean, has anybody heard anything about if we're still going to move forward with uh, providing some sort of a shelter for them? No, but uh, <coughs> not in the mayor's council one. We did talk about I- issues and uh, what are we going? Are we noticing other residents falling through the cracks and for what other reasons? Other things out there that are you know there are programs that people are not availing themselves mm-hmm. to. And You're on the homeless it. coalition, right? Mayor? I'm on the oh. homeless ministry board. Oh, I see. For the Archdiocese of Aganya, yeah, but uh, I'm also on. I'm, I'm the president. Well, you're on all the fun so. ones: homeless and bereavement. <laughs> there you go, and 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 the one from <laughs> yes, and Gumamami. So I got I have I have tied up, but it's you know they're near and dear to my heart. We're constantly out there, and um, yeah, we're seeing it. So we've seen an increased people of coming to the, the kitchen, asking for food, getting the commodities on a regular basis when we issue them, you know. And then for Gumamami's side, we run a drop-in center in Tabuning, and we've seen a rise in that too. And some of the things our discussion with a lot of them is transportation is probably one of the biggest
biggest things of why people aren't getting to the shelters. Mm -hmm. And, you know, our solution was just get three of those vans that are sitting down at GSA and just give, give one to Salvation Army, give one to, you know, uh, Catholic Social Services, and give one to Gumamami. And so they can take transport people to the shelters that are already there because some of the shelters are not at capacity. And for whatever reason, their people are not there and it's because they can't get their stuff there and get in there and they don't have the money for the public transportation. So there are gaps on what needs to be done because in our discussion with the VSO's office officers, some of the homeless want to go to the shelter, but they have no way. And the VSO's can't take them on their bikes and other things. So we're trying to find a way to kind of just close that loop. Right on there. Well, again, thank you guys uh, for what you guys have been doing. I know you guys haven't stopped working. That's a fact. So yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, it's always a joy to kind of just be able to share our little story here and there, but I will send you that picture and let you uh, see for yourself. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know that uh, we had asked the uh, governor if she was planning a special recognition for the, um, the quarantine uh, saviors, and she had answered yes. So uh, we're going to try and get you in line right after them for maybe a commendation, <laughs> resolution. COVID Did heroes. Give you like a COVID trophy or something. <laughs> it's all right. I think the, 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 the heartbreaking one is the, the memorials for liberation. You yeah. know, a lot of people are looking at it. And so we're, I think uh, the discussion yesterday is we're probably looking at it on December, December nice. 8th. Good, good. Uh, Just, oh, to move back everything? Move back all the memorials around the December time mm -hmm. frame. So, you know, there's the, the day that Guam was attacked. So yeah. we'll probably lead up to it in, in okay. that manner. Uh, instead of that, just for the safety of everybody on this end. So right. uh, we've kind of agreed to kind of postpone those memorials. Yeah. Nice. As I'm going to go try and find, I know we've got uh, a lot of the memorials because I think we went to almost every single one sure yeah, uh, one year. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll reach into our archives and see if we could rerun some of those. Yeah, we're thinking like a, a throwback liberation thing, right? Yeah. yeah. And that's something that we discuss is, I mean, uh, it's just telling the story of what happened there mm -hmm. and uh, making sure people don't forget, you know, that's that's the things that some of the mayors are afraid of. We missed this year, next year, it's, you know, it's not that it's not important, but next year it could be something else. So how do we be able to tell the story, keep the memory of those survivors, if, mm -hmm. were, if there are survivors that are there, how do we mm -hmm. tell their story and then tell the story of the actual place of what happened there. Mm -hmm. So we appreciate KOM's and uh, help uh, in telling that story. Yes, of right. course. I mean, it's really emotional because like, I went to a lot of them and uh, I think it was the first time I went to almost every single one and you you don't walk out of there without crying. Yeah, and, that, and that's the thing. And yeah. uh, a You're lot of just our work moved. survivors. Even a tough we, guy like me, I, I just can't help it. Yeah, I, there was one story. There was one man, I think it was Mr. Tobis. He told his story and, oh, man, I I was in tears and I was like, why, why am I crying? <laughs> why am I crying? Just that mm -hmm. He just felt everything that through his words of what happened in that manner and it's just something that you don't think could ever happen but it did here to our own people so one of the things that we noticed yesterday as mayors too and i don't know if you've actually tracked it but the war claims normally they're only hearing 100 at a time they actually heard 100 but they heard 450 claims in their main meeting so they're trying to really push out the payment compensation so mm -hmm. if you just go to the foreign settlement act yeah. i was like wow this is the largest number I've seen them do, and so I guess they're really trying to just get get that all out. Yeah, I remember we had uh, Doug Dominich on the show, uh, the Assistant Interior Secretary, and he said, yeah, they're looking at ways that they can um, push out a lot of these payments because they know uh, people are hurting, so it looks like that's uh, on its way to fruition, so thank thank you, um, Doug, for that. Yeah. 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 Uh, okay, okay yeah. Mayor, we're going to run because uh, we got uh, Guam EPA on. No problem. Right Appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. For the call. Thank you. Well, Take care. care. Wash your hands. Bye bye. Okay. Bye bye. See you. All right. Sananya, Sin City in the house. Uh, let's keep it on the phones here. A uh, lot of talk about recycling and illegal dumping. And uh, I wanted to bring uh, Nick Lee on, on from the Guam Environmental Protection Agency. Good morning, Nick. Hey, good morning, Chris. You know, there was one thing that uh, the mayor said about, uh, tell me one person that's ever been prosecuted for illegal dumping or, or, or littering. Do you know of any case? Uh, prosecuted? Uh, I, I'm, I, well, I, I, I don't know if I would say prosecuted, but, uh, but 